And we are live. JT here, and welcome to The Huddle. The Huddle is where I sit down with successful people from the world of sport and coaching. It's to learn more about their journey to greatness. Why do I have these conversations? Because success always leaves clues. I want to take a moment to thank you, whether you are watching on YouTube or whether you're listening to the audio on the podcast. Thank you so much for being here with me and my special guest today. And here's my friendly reminder to you. The mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's wide open. So my challenge to you is to go all in on this conversation to remove any distractions and get laser focused on the here and the now. And I guarantee you, you will gain a valuable nugget of wisdom that will not only help you succeed in sport, but more importantly, in the game of life. I've been looking forward to my conversation with my special guest today. Um, we had the opportunity to meet, to connect, and to just get to know each other a bit at, at a recent event. Um, and the more I got to learn about his journey, my curiosity was going, just learning more about, you know, how he got to where he is today and just learning more about his journey. I thought it was a great opportunity to bring him into the huddle and share a little bit about his journey to greatness. Uh, my guest in the huddle today is currently serving as a member with the Toronto Argonauts, Toronto Argonauts in the Canadian Football League. My guest in the huddle today is Robbie Smith. How are you today, brother? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, JT, for that intro. How are you? Great, brother. Great. Uh, you know, again, get to have a great conversation with you, get to share a little bit about your journey, all the great things you're up to in the world. So, you know, when I remind myself of that, it reminds me that life's life's all good. <laughs> okay. Um before we get kicked off in the huddle, pun intended, I just want to take a moment to count my blessings. Uh, and for me, it's a daily practice. Uh, some days I do it better than others, but I do find those days where I'm most intentional, most consistent counting my blessings. I do find those days are filled with a little bit more love, a little bit more joy, a little bit more peace. And I'm a big believer, biggest blessing you can give anyone is your time and energy. So just want to thank you again for blessing us with some of your time and energy here today, brother. I appreciate it. I, I love that practice attitude. It definitely, I think that's a great way to start the day. I might need to, might need to start doing that. <laughs> hey, I had a great coach and mentor who shared that with me. So now I share it with you. And now, you know, let's just, let's just make this world feel a little more blessed. <laughs> forward. The, the next time my alarm goes off in the morning and I don't want to wake up, I'm going to, I'm going to count my blessings. <laughs> Okay, brother. So um, one of the first things I like to do in the huddle is to remind others, and, and importantly myself, that life is a game and games are supposed to be fun. I had a coaching colleague and a great friend who would always say, hey, we all have these things that make us unique and different. Our responsibility really is to celebrate them. So I'm curious, What's an interesting fact about you that maybe a lot of people don't know that you'd be open to sharing with our community today? Hmm, an interesting fact in <laughs> terms of something I'm doing right now, something that I've done in the past. Whatever's on your heart, brother. I'll say this because I'm about to do it right after um, right after this. Um, um, so I, I'll pretty much say um, recently, I've kind of tried to get into um, home renovations and, um, you know, a little DIY work. So uh, over the past year, I've had a lot of ups and downs in that in the whole world of DIY and some really big mistakes and a little uh, smaller triumphs. So I'll say this off season, I, um, I was trying to renovate my laundry room and I accidentally uh, drilled into a main water line. <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, I, I'd say it's something interesting. It's something fun, you know, just always get your hands in something new and you, it was a big ordeal cost cost a couple thousand dollars but you know we're over it now we're, we're, we're learning every day yeah um, so i'd say something a little interesting about me 
Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting as, as you share that it reminds about, you know, one of the beauties of whole right of home ownership is you, you know you, you sometimes always find them ways to make it feel a little bit more homey or you know just you know just upgrading things a little bit i'm curious um what has been the biggest lesson you've taken from that as you've sort of flexed your diy muscle and then kind of you know just learning a little bit more I think I learned a bunch of lessons. One one big lesson I've learned from that is a lot of times the only thing you need are you, you you need a combination of two things really. A lot of things really aren't as difficult as they may seem. Um, obviously, there are people that are professionals and they obviously are a lot better at it than you. But a lot of times, the things that people are lacking or the things that I've needed was one the knowledge to be able to 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 do these things and knowing what to do, what materials to get, how to place them in a certain order, what's the order you do it in. And obviously, I think YouTube helps a lot with that other handy people in your life. Um, but the other thing is the resources. So having the tools you might need from Home Depot or going on Facebook Marketplace to get different sets of tools. And then once you have the knowledge and once you have the tools, um, a lot of the things that you might look at and see, wow, like this is very far beyond the scope of my ability. Once you have the knowledge and you have the resources, you realize that it's 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 within the scope for a lot of people. And obviously, there will be a lot of mistakes along the way, as I've learned. And it might take you a little longer than somebody who's a professional, but you could still get it done the, the exact same way. And I think that's something that's that's true in a lot of different facets of life, not just DIY, but maybe anything professionally or any hobby or anything. Any simple, anything that you're trying to master when you have that knowledge and you have the when you have the resources you're you're able to get a lot more done than you previously thought before mm -hmm. it's interesting how you shared that right how you talked about sort of like the ebbs and flows of any journey right like you're gonna you're gonna make some mistakes you're gonna celebrate some wins along the way but it's interesting as you described that you could very much apply that those same themes to your journey as a high quality athlete or coach within sport. 1000%, 1000%. And, you know, you, you kind of use some of those same mental, um, uh, mental models to kind of get you through when you when you make a, a big mistake, like I did, having yeah. to call plumbers and, and pay 1000s of dollars. And, you know, um, yeah. wonder if you destroyed your house. And but you realize, you know, you wake up to see another day, the yeah. knee fix can be repaired. It's not the end of the world. And you just keep keep learning and you keep going. Absolutely. Um, so I'm curious, you know, sport has obviously played an important role for you in your life. You know, uh, you're a Brampton guy, born and raised, right? You moved on um, into the post-secondary to play at, at Laurier. You won a Yates Cup there. And, you know, you're still playing today at the highest level, right? With the Toronto Argonauts going on to your sixth, you just started your sixth uh, season with the Argos. So it's obviously very evident that sport has played an important role for you in your life. I'm curious, what is a life lesson that you've taken from sport that you find yourself applying to other areas of your life besides just DIY projects? <laughs> the biggest lesson, I I wish I could say I learned it from sport, yeah. but I think personally that I learned it from home and I think it's been translate. And I think I I relearned that lesson within sport. And I think that lesson really took me um, everywhere else that I'm going to go for the rest of my life. And that lesson is really simple. And I think it's that hard work works. Obviously, um, in sport, you need to you need to work very hard. It's a very very competitive environment. Um, extremely competitive. That's 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 a, almost one of the beauties of sport. Mm -hmm. So I think when you really learn that, and you really, um, especially as a younger athlete, when I've realized and have had coaches that tell me I need to work hard, and when you actually realize that, and and you put that work in, and those results start to express themselves and show themselves on the field, you really realize that one of the fundamental ingredients of success in the sporting world is is hard work, mm -hmm. and I think one of the fundamental um, ingredients for success in whether you're trying to run a business or whether you're trying to have a strong um, family life, you you need to work hard constantly at it and constantly get better and constantly develop new skills and constantly put that effort in. Effort in. 
So I think hard work is the biggest lesson, especially through sport, because a lot of those practice days, you don't want to be there, but yeah. you still need to be intentional with your practice and with getting better. And you still need to do it every single day, day in and day out. Um, especially when you think of me at my age, obviously um, people are playing sports all at different times in their life, but me being 27 years old now, that means I've been playing football for over 10 years, 12 years, and you need to constantly do it every day. You can't just be good for one day. You need to be good for months. You need to be good for years on a time. And that takes constant hard work constantly. So I think that's the biggest lesson that I've learned. And I think that's something that, that I've been able to take with me, whether that be in um, school, mm -hmm. uh, university or or anywhere yeah well and it's interesting i appreciate you sharing because it's a pretty simple idea right like the idea of like hard work and as you were sharing that i think back to a quote you know that i'll paraphrase that the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary right mm -hmm. like like you said like the idea of like you got to be willing to to put the work in, you got to be willing to, to do the hard work, you, you know, we're giving a gym analogy, you got to be willing to put in the reps and sets when, when nobody's watching. Mm -hmm. So for you, what, what's the key there to hard work? Cause again, anyone that's played sport, any sort of higher level, you know, high quality athlete or coach, like they understand the, the part about hard work, but you know, if, if it said, you know, what is that? If we had to break it down a little bit more, the idea of hard work, what would you say, how would you go about doing that? I'm just curious. Yeah, so I think if I was telling anybody that uh, um, in regards to, to working hard and doing that for a long time, yeah. um, whatever it is, anything that you're trying to master or if you anything that 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 you have a mastery towards or that you really want to become excellent in, I think the biggest things to think about is one, you need to be intentional with the improvement that you're trying to make. Mm -hmm. And with that, I say being intentional, like if I'm a football player, and I want to be a better football player, there's a whole different, there's a large four person coactive model that I could think of. I need to be better physically. I need to be better psychologically. I need to be better technically with my technique and I need to be better um, mentally with my plays. So really being intentional, not just, you know, I want to be a better football player and I'm going to um, just go run 10 miles mm -hmm. or I'm just going to go watch um, my favorite Vaughn Miller highlights 20 times. I'm really going to, you know, spend that time in the gym, work with my work with my strength coach, see what areas of my game that I need to be stronger in. Do I need stronger legs? Do I need a stronger upper body? If I struggle with the plays and I, I really want to have a mastery of the playbook, I'm going to go not only spend my time in meetings and write down everything and um, I'll also go meet with my defensive coordinator or my head coach or my offensive coordinator. And I'm going to meet with him extra if I have any questions. I'm going to go over my plays at night. Um, while I'm on the field, I'm going to communicate with other people in my position group, make sure I know their jobs as well in case they have a mental mishap. I can I can help them along their way. And I think there's there's a lot of mastery there psychologically or anything technically. After practice, I'll, I'll go get, get a couple extra reps in. Maybe if I'm a receiver, I'll run a couple extra curl routes and make sure that that's feeling good to me. Or if I'm a defensive lineman like myself, I'll work a couple extra pass rush moves, make sure my, my double swipe or my cross chop is exactly how I want it. So I think one of the biggest things with hard work is really being as intentional as possible with the work you're putting in. And I think the other one um, would be um, instead of zooming out and take a holistic approach of thinking, this is what I want to do in my career. For example, if you're a high school athlete and you're a sophomore in high school, instead of thinking, I want to play in the NFL, that's that's so far away as a sophomore. You're almost seven, eight years away from that even being a possibility. Just think of the minute details. When you wake up every morning, just think of how can I get better today? What can I do today? It, and then as long as you stack those days up together and together and you keep stacking those days, have one good day, have two good days. And then now you've had a good week and then you want to stack the weeks together. I've had one good week. I want to have another good week. And that when I say stacking those days together, it's really being intentional in those days. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you'll obviously have a good day. If I felt like I had a great workout today, I studied my plays today. I did what I needed to do schoolwork. Then I've had a good day. Now I'm going to try and have another good day. And then over years, obviously that lends itself to, to help me be successful instead of just thinking, Oh, how am I going to make it to the NFL? I'm just watching Von Miller highlights on my couch when I could spend this time actually learning my playbook or actually working out or something like that. So I think those are the biggest things to, to, to be able to use hard work um, in your everyday life. 
Yeah. Well, I appreciate you kind of break it down. You can kind of just see that that training background, that kin background you, right? Like the ability to break things down to like the minute details, right? And there are a couple of themes sort of jumped out there as you were sharing. It's this idea of like high quality, high performers have this harmony between, yes, they're goal oriented. Like they, they have an idea of where they want to go, but they're process driven. They're right here. They're right now. Like, what is it, like you said, that I need to work on? Is it is it, what do I need to work on in my pass rush? Do I need to get my legs stronger, right? Do I need to eat better? Do I need to get that extra half an hour of sleep? So it was really breaking it down to the right here, the right now, what can I do today? Um, but then you also sort of talked about this idea of like, be intentional, be focused with the work. There's 18 things you could do, but is that, but was it you need to do today to get you to where you say you want to go? So really love the idea of like process, like, you know, sort of that very much being process driven. Mm -hmm. And I'll, okay, I'll get going. No, no, go ahead. No, I'll just say like one more example of that, that I kind of learned too late in life. Um, so I, I just thought of this now, but I should have said it when I was saying it. But in terms of intentional with what you want to do, obviously, I have a kinesiology background. I've, I've been a strength conditioning coach for the last um, over five years. Um, so when I was in university at Laurier, um, I wasn't starting, uh, as a freshman, I wasn't starting as a sophomore. Um, but basically I said, I want to be a better football player. I want to make that starting, uh, roster. And then my idea was that of, is just going to the gym and squatting three times a week because I just wanted to work out more. I just, I just thought working out equals better at football. <laughs> but my, at the time, the strength really wasn't an issue for me in my game. So I, I thought just working out and doing more squats would make me a better football player. But really, I had I had other things that I had to learn at that time that would have been that would have been much more important for me. Mm. Well, it's, and it, you know, it's interesting that sort of theme, right? It's like you said with your DIY project. Sometimes you need to kind of you know walk through the fire a little bit to sort of understand that there's sometimes a better way, a more effective way, a more efficient way to to get to where you want to go, right? Uh, the bumps yeah. and the bruises. Okay. Um, I'm curious, like, you know, this idea of being process driven, how has that idea of being really the ability to remind yourself, right, to focus on being right here, right now, in the moment, you know, to fall in love with the process, whatever sports now do I do? How has that lesson shown up for you in sport? Like, is there, you know, is there a memory that you have an experience that you've gone through as a high quality athlete where you really started to, okay, this is when I'm process driven, you know, this is where, this is where the magic happens. Yeah, for sure. And I'll say, uh, it, it's probably, um, a lesson I learned maybe a little later in my career, because this okay. is, this is just something I thought of actually as a pro, um, and something I wish I probably knew earlier and maybe a little earlier in my athletic career, I wasn't, um, as cerebral of an athlete. So I think it probably helped me earlier in my career, but I remember, um, I think I might've been my second year with the Argos. Um, I kind of made these huge goals for what I wanted to do that year, you know, um, be in a great cup, be a, a most outstanding Canadian, be a defensive player of the year. And uh, um, I remember thinking before plays in games, like I want to be an MVP. I want to be an MVP. So I'm lined up on the line thinking I want to be an MVP, go do something amazing this play. And then nothing amazing would happen. And then the next play would happen. I would think I want to be an MVP. I want to be most outstanding Canadian. And then I would do something wrong or something like that. And I think I reflected at the end of that year uh, that in the moment when you're playing football before a snap, you're supposed to be thinking of so many different things. What's the offensive lines formation? Like it, what's the, what's the down and distance? Are we in first and 10? What's the play that we have right now? Um, is my running back out wide? Is, is the offensive tackle leading? What's my responsibility in regards to the defensive tackle? Am I blitzing? Am I dropping into coverage? And I think those are all like, what move am I going to do? And if it, if it is a second and long, and I think those are all amazing things that you should think of when you're actually in the fire, instead yeah. of thinking of, I want to, I, I want to play in the NFL. You shouldn't be thinking of that when you're, when you're in the middle of a play. And I think that's probably one of the biggest lessons I learned um, coming out of that year is that when you're in the moment, you need to be focused on information or anything that's in your mind that's actually relevant to what you're doing. 
to help you get to that goal. And that's talking about the process. Like, Hey, what are we doing right now? Not what's this large overarching thing that I'm thinking um, of at the time. It's, it's what, what, what's the, what's the details that I need to focus on right now for this one specific play. And then that next play, I'm going to think of something totally different because it's going to be a total set of information that I need to process and, and figure out. Mm. I'm, I'm curious your perspective again, as someone who has, you know, played at the highest level that's, that's a professional athlete there, you know, you often hear these pro athletes talk about, you know, as you move up, it's, it's, you know, finding those intangibles, right? It's like learning, like you said, find out the cues, what information it's playing with eyes. Like, what are my cues? What is the person? A, a kind of, has that very much been a part of your journey where you're learning how to focus your attention, you're focusing your energy and, trying to find these like cues, this information that will give you kind of like that leg up on that play? Yeah, I think so. And I think it's something that I've kind of faded in and out. Um, okay. I forget the word for it, but you know when athletes talking about being in the zone? Yeah. Or just um, anybody like, I don't know, when you're writing an essay or do it, whatever kind of work you're doing and you really feel like you have that, like you, your, your, your mental capacity is really focused onto what it needs to be. You feel like you're in the optimal um, headspace. Yeah. I feel like I've always, um, I think that year and that situation when I'm talking about, I think I definitely, a lot of times I was not in the zone. And I think um, me um, developing as an athlete, I feel like I kind of realize, um, especially as my career um, goes on, I think I learn more of what I need to get into that zone and sometimes how I'm not in that zone. Maybe I'm too lethargic in a competition or maybe too I'm, I'm too amped up and I need to calm myself down a little bit. And I think those are kind of the things that I've learned as I go on or as I've go, gone on is how, how to learn how to how to operate in that mind state and, and really what that mind state is supposed to feel like when I'm really operating at my best and where my concentration is where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you gave that analogy. I'm curious your perspective on this, right? So it sounds like you know, it's a, it's a reminder as you share that we all sort of operate on like a continuum on one end, there's like busy, distracted, you know, and we all, and we all feel busy, distracted at times, right. Our minds. And then we have these other times where we go the other end where we're focused, we're laser focused, right. We're, we're in the zone, right. So it sounds like it's a bit of this journey between sort of somewhere on the continuum. I almost relate it back to, okay, when we're busy, it's like a nine lane highway. But mm -hmm. then as we lock in, as we get in the zone, what happens is we bring that nine lane highway, maybe it's down to a five lane highway, mm -hmm. three. And then when we're in the zone, it's like a one lane highway. It's full go. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like um, that analogy. I I'm curious from uh, your perspective, you know, one of the interesting things as we, you know, as we start to discuss your journey was, you know, you were, you were born and raised in the GTA, right? You go a little bit down the 401 West and, and spend some time at Laurier. And then once your time at Laurier is done, you come back, you get drafted um, by Toronto. What has that been like for you being GTA born and raised and then having the opportunity to play at the professional level for quote unquote, the hometown team? What has that been like for you? I still, I, I talk about, but to me, it's really nothing short of amazing. Like I can't even explain. Like, I think I was probably in the ninth grade. I remember the 2012 great cup that the Argos won. And I remember Justin Bieber did the halftime and Chad Cackert was a running back at the time. And I think Chad Owens was in that, um, that great cup as well. And I remember watching that on TV and thinking like, wow, that's so cool. But I ne like never, even at that time, did I think that I would have had a chance to, to play in the CFL, let alone for the Argos. And then I even remember um, when I was a senior in high school and in 2015, we had a special game where um, before the Argos game that daytime, so at 1 p.m., the whole school came down and and we went and we played um, at the Rogers Center where they played at the time. So we played at the Rogers Center, our whole school came out and then we stayed and watched the Argos play that night. And I remember thinking like, wow, this is the coolest thing in the world to get to play um in the Rogers Center and thinking, wow, and then just seeing the CFL game, seeing the Argos boards and still not even thinking like that that's even possible. Just thinking that that's beyond me. Um, 
but just really being from the GTA and being from Brampton and literally it being a hometown team. And then now to be able to, to be on the other side. And then when you're running out of the tunnel and you see little kids from around the city and they're, and you know, they're screaming your name, they're screaming, go Argos. And just to think like, Hey, I was there um, not that long ago, or maybe it was that long ago, depending on, depending on who you talk to. Um, it's 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 a it's a it's a phenomenal 360 moment and i and i feel like when we talk about practicing gratitude that's something that um i think over the last five years probably i've i've learned to um probably maybe i've taken it for granted a little bit but i, I every time i reflect of it reflect on it i think it's i think it's amazing i can't even lie i appreciate you sharing and it's and it's interesting because i didn't know that part of your journey right you like rewind back to 2015 and what's really interesting is you are not I've had a conversation in the huddle with someone that has been in the Argos locker room with you has this talked about, they have a similar memory at a different life stage where they went to an Argos game. So I guess here's my question to you. As you look back now with what you know, like based on the information you have today, why, why do you think that, what do you think the purpose of that 2015 thing was? Like, do you think it started to plant any seeds of possibility with you? Do you think it started to inspire you to maybe think a little bigger, dream a little bigger? And I'm really curious in your perspective. You know, I wonder subconsciously, it definitely did. Because I think, you know, when as like when you see more, you can like when you see it, you can touch it. You know, I uh, I don't know who said that or or where that proverb came from, but um, I feel like that's real. Like once you see that it's possible or once you see somebody doing it or somebody that looks like you or once you're in a certain environment, it now makes it more real. It doesn't seem so far out of the fetch that it seems impossible, but like I remember just playing in the Rogers Center and just you're just looking around, even though the stadium was empty, obviously being a high school team, we're not filling up 20, 30,000 seats, but you're still just looking around the entire environment and really taking it all in. You're thinking like, wow, how awesome would it be to play football um, on a stage this large? And I think it definitely does subconsciously plant a seed in your mind like, hey, if they could do it, so can we. And especially to know that we played on this field and then whatever, six, seven, seven hours later, the, the Toronto Argos, they packed up this whole stadium and now they're playing on the same field. So if we're playing on the same field, why can't we? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. It sounds like it just, yeah, like you said, it's just that possibility, right? Of what if, what could be, right? Like who knows, right? And, and I think back to, you know, depending on when people are listening to this, you know, you, you had your home opener, your 2024 home opener just a couple of days ago. And you think about what if, you know, that next generation, that next, you know, student athlete from the GTA, what if they were just watching you right now and they, they saw you run out and all of a sudden they're like, Hey, like maybe that could be me. Like, and it's really one of those full circle moments. Yeah. And it keeps going. Yeah. That's the goal. That's the goal. I hope, I, I hope, um, I hope one day um, that's uh, uh, an athlete can say, you know, um, they were able to see the Argos from 19 to 24 and that inspired them to play. Like it would make my heart warm. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, you know, you, you've, you've been a part of some great teams, right. Over your football journey, right. You think back to, you know, winning a Yates cup at Laurier, right. Winning a great cup um, in Toronto. I, I'm curious for you, has there been a memory along your football journey, which really stands out where like, when you look back, you, you're like, you just, I don't know, just there was something really special where, it just, like you said, warms your heart. One specific football memory? Or is there one that stands out right now? Yeah, I wonder. Uh, for me, I think, I don't know, maybe because I was so young at the time. Obviously, that's tough because I have so many, I have so many yeah. memories. I really have so many memories. But um, honestly, my favorite football memory doesn't even have to do with football. It's okay. just um, when I was at when I was at Laurier and I think I might have been a rookie or, or a sophomore at the time. And like one of our favorite um, songs came on. I forget what the name of the song. I think it was like a. Uh, Black Beatles by um, Sway Lee. And then everybody's just dancing in the locker room. 
And, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's just one of my favorite memories back at Laurier, just, you know, you and a bunch of friends, a bunch of people that you work so hard with and, and have come close to. And you guys are just, you know, enjoying each other's moment with some great music in the locker room after a hard practice. And I feel like that 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 moment isn't exclusive to me. I'm sure you have moments similar to that. And I have moments similar to that when I was in the Argos. But um Obviously, I haven't retired yet. People say when they retire, the thing you miss the most is okay. being in the locker room with, with, with your teammates and your friends. But I think those are some of the moments that I I, I cherish the most and I, I think back to the most mm. my football career. It's interesting, right? Like you think of, you know, all the big wins you've been a part of, you know, the championships you've won. And the thing that stands out to you is those those memories in, in the locker rooms. And like you said, it was after a practice, music comes on, you're with their the boys and you're just kind of like that's interesting yeah 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 but okay. yeah it, it is a great feeling though yeah um i'm curious you know one of the um interesting things and one of the things that sort of when we first met and connected is you know as, as i was telling to you at the switch mentality event you know i'm i'm very curious right i'm like okay robbie like i want to learn more about you your journey like what makes you tick you know, one of the interesting things was you talked about, you know, we started getting into this conversation about, you know, what's next for football, right? In this province, like you've, you've, you've seen it at multiple levels. I'm curious, what, what sort of, what has been inspiring you to think about, you know, the next step in this football evolution of giving back to the greater community? Like, what do you, what do you think is sort of the inspiration behind that? I think for me, I, I have to humbly realize um, everything that the sport, first, I have to humbly realize that everything that the sport of football has given me. And I really, th I truly believe that that football has really changed my life for the better in so many ways that I we could probably do a whole other podcast of just how much um, football has done for me in my life and how much it's made me a better player better person on and off the field the different um characteristics and uh personality traits that i've positive personality traits that i've been to develop the camaraderie the people i've met the the places i've been um the education that helped me received um i cannot thank football enough for for what it has done for me um and when i think about giving back and when I was in high school and playing high school football and then playing Brampton Bulldogs, I realized um, it took so many different coaches and players to make that possible. Um, and it, and it, and it, and it really takes a community to, to take this next generation. And obviously none of these coaches owe me a, like a, they don't, they don't owe me anything or I don't owe them anything. Um, they're doing this out of the, the kindness and, and the love of their heart. And, and it's given so much to me. So I realized um, if football has given so much to me and I didn't know football was going to do this. Um, I obviously know that football would do so many amazing things for the next generation of athletes, especially um, where, where, where I come from me being a Brampton, um, being a Brampton boy and, and then playing for a hometown team, I get to be close and I get to, to really, you know, see these athletes. And even now I'm able to go to, to Brampton Bulldogs. I'm able to go to their practices I'm able to go speak to their players. And, um, honestly, it's so heartwarming because they feel so receptive. Um, and I, and I feel like I'm able to actually, um, give them something that they're able to take. And I feel like they're, they're very receptive towards me. So uh, I, I really see that importance and, you know, um, going back and helping with all the people that have helped me get to where I am, because mm -hmm. without some of these coaches and without Brampton Bulldogs and some of these organizations, I wouldn't have done even half the things that I'm able to do today and we wouldn't be having this conversation. So it's something that, you know, when we talk about paying it forward, like I have to be able to pay that forward. I'm curious your perspective as someone who's been through, right, like minor football, through high school football, moved on to youth sport. You know, one of the interesting things are there's a lot of oftentimes, especially with, you know, professional athletes that talk about, you know, the grassroots community football, like having a lot of people that poured their time and energy, very often, you know, the majority of people being volunteers, like 99%. Just, just selflessly giving their time and energy to you. What, what do you think that that has meant? Like you talked about, like you wouldn't be where you're at today. Like, 
what, how do you think that that served you on your journey? Just having people that were so willing to give you their time and energy and, and just pour into you. Yeah. Well, I think in life, um, there aren't too many people in life in general that truly, truly, um, really want the best for you and want you to succeed. So I think whenever you have these people in your life, I think it's so important that you stay close to them and, you know, you, you really feed off the the advice and, and the things that they're trying to give you. Um, I had a lot of really amazing coaches, but one of the, my main coaches in high school, his name was uh, Coach Austin. Um, I'm pretty sure he coaches in Niagara still. I think he coaches Niagara Junior Spears. He, he moved from Brampton to Niagara, but he coaches over there. But um, if you ask a lot of people that, that, that came from Brampton in my time, like he was a phenomenal coach. And I remember some of the things like um, he would have me waking up at 5 a.m. and we would go to school at at 6 30 and he would make us do homework from 6 30 to 7 and then we'd have to work out and run or work out or something from 7 to 8 a.m. and obviously that was all volunteer he was he was waking up at 4 a.m. 5 a.m. just to coach a bunch of uh, uh, ungrateful high school kids you know but that's really what helped me set set me apart early in my career to to for me to leverage to becoming a better player and he really just did that uh out of I don't even know why, because I couldn't even, I almost couldn't even imagine doing that myself, yeah. but, uh, but it's something truly selfless and something amazing. Like, like that's something that I will remember forever, like how much time and how much effort he put into making me a better athlete and how much that helped me get to the next level. Um, like that, that got me into university. Um, so I think that's something that's amazing when you think about the volunteer and she's not the only person that does that there are so many volunteers all around the gta all around canada that are that are putting in their times giving their effort to these kids and 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 i don't think it goes unnoticed mm. it, it's interesting right as you share that right as you share those memories like of coach austin like inspiring you probably some days had to inspire you a little bit more to get yeah. up and go do homework but you know you talked about one of the things you've taken most away from sport is like the willingness to work hard right? The ability to do that extra rep and set. And you think of how many of those lessons were because you knew coach Austin was so willingly to give up their time and energy where it would have been easier for them to be at home and, you know, be in their own home. And then you putting in the reps and sets to do your homework at six 30 in the morning. That's where those lessons, you know, that idea of more is caught than taught. Like, yeah. how many, right. Yeah. A hundred percent. I'm 1000%. 1, okay. Um, I'm curious, as a Brampton boy, you know, one of the interesting things is there seems this idea of giving back seems to be really embedded into the, like the Brampton Bulldogs, like family. Like it just, I think of all the coaches that, you know, like they just, that's just what we do, right? We give back, right? We pay it forward to the next generation. But there also seems to be a fair connection too into Laurier. Do you think that that's, do you think that's a coincidence? I'm curious, like the amount of Brampton athletes that have moved on to, to Laurier, like, is you think, I'm just curious your thoughts on that. I don't know. It, it must be though. It must be, but I get some, I get, I get very similar, um, very similar vibes when I think about Laurier. And maybe that's probably one of the reasons that I committed because Laurier felt like a family. Like I remember like um, Chris Ackie, I think he played eight years in the CFL um, with the Montreal Alouettes, but I remember one off season from the Argos. Um, I lived at his place in Kitchener and I never played with him at Laurier. Um, but you know, just that, that Laurier connection, that, that, that family, you know, I don't know, I don't know if call it family atmosphere, but whatever that connection is of always giving back and helping each other out. Like even, um, S.A. Marabra, he had, I think he's, um, I think he probably played eight years and I think he's a free agent right now, but it, us still being, you know, friends, him wishing me a happy birthday and stuff. And we've never played with each other a day in our life, but you know, I think that's, I don't know, some, maybe something adjacent between Brandon and Laurier. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. There, there's there's something there, you know, and it, it'd be interesting to, you know, we could probably do a deep dive on what that is. But uh, I, I'm curious, you know, one of the things as we were talking, what really sort of grabbed my attention is when you talked about this idea of like being able to bring the Grey Cup back home, right? And you just seeing the impact. I'm curious, what did that mean to you in terms of like, okay, how do we build off this? Like, it's great to bring the Great Cup back home, but just seeing the energy, the enthusiasm of seeing that, like, what, what, what has that inspired you to start thinking about? How, how's that driving 
you forward as you embark on this next phase of your journey? Yeah, I think it was huge. I, I I was able to bring the Grey Cup when we won. I was able to bring the Grey Cup three places. The first I brought it to the elementary school that I went to, um, Cardinal Newman. I think it has a different name now, St. John Newman. But I was able to bring it there, and that's a K to eight school. And and the kids there, they were ecstatic. Everybody, it was it was amazing. I was able to bring it to my high school, um, St. Thomas Aquinas in Brampton. And I guess I'll just touch on that for a second, but. Uh, um, I was able to bring it to my high school and that was amazing. They had a huge assembly. It was, it was love. I, I, I was able to talk to the students there, um, obviously impart some wisdom on them. They were really excited. I talked to some of my old coaches, um, and I, I, like I, in the speech, I talked about how amazing football and how much it changed my life and being able to bring the great cup back there. And then I'm talking to the coaches and then I realized, you know, they, at St. Thomas Aquinas, they don't even have football anymore. You know, so all of those memories, all of those, some of my friends, some of my closest friends from high school that I still talk to to this day, a lot of it was through um, playing football at Aquinas. And now there's no program anymore, obviously, um, because of COVID. Um, and I just think that that really inspired me to start um, thinking of how I could um, impart myself in different ways moving forward, um, helping grow the game of football. Again, we were talking about it, how much football has given to me and how much it's done in my life. I know it would be positive in, in the lives of people uh, moving forward. And then I was able to bring it to um, the city of Brampton, um, obviously with Patrick Mayor Brown and um, some Argos fans in Brampton, bringing, uh, bringing it to City Hall with uh, Sam Achampong, another another Brampton Bulldog or, or another Brampton, uh, Brampton person that was, uh, that was on that 2022 Argos team. Um, and that was phenomenal too. And I just think moving forward, I think it's so important for, for, um, guys like me just to, you know, be able to take that and be able to take that momentum and, and, and move it farther into the community. Um, because obviously winning the great cup, um, at home and it, 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 it did shine a little bit of light. And I think it, um, you know, got to take that momentum and, and move it into the community and yeah, provide more. I'm curious as someone who is whose life has been greatly impacted, right? Like you've talked numerous times about just life lessons, the people, you know, how it how inspired you to think and dream bigger in your own life. You know, it's interesting because, you know, the region, you know, Peel and, and Brampton, like it's 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 been hit hard, right? Like you look at the amount of high school football, you know, especially coming out of COVID, it 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 did a number on it. Why do you think it's so important to have you know, access to opportunity, uh, especially with football in sometimes underserved communities like Brampton. Like, what? why do you think it, it's not a question of, hey, yeah, it will be a nice to have. No, like we need this to give young people a vehicle. A hundred percent, especially when I think of, um, obviously you've, you've met and you've countered a bunch of Brampton athletes, but um, one thing about Brampton, I guess you could say it about the GTA in general, is that it's extremely diverse, extremely, extremely diverse. Um, there are people from all different walks of life. And I think um, one thing that's amazing about football is that when you're playing football, it's also a very diverse team. You have people of different shapes, different sizes, different backgrounds. Um, obviously, me growing up and playing football, I realized not everybody on my team has the same opportunities. Sometimes we don't have the same opportunities. And I think one amazing thing about football is that it could always be a vehicle onto something else whether or not you go and play at the next level. I'll just say uh, a quick story of something that's close to me is that um, obviously I went and I did kinesiology at Laurier, but if it weren't for football, um, then I wouldn't have been at Laurier. Um, obviously um, I tried really hard in school, but maybe I wasn't the smartest, you know, chicken in the, in the, in the pen, but uh, um, I didn't have the grades to get into Laurier straight um, based off the, the the normal admission standards. And I was able to leverage football and help me get into university and play at the university level. And obviously I ended up um, excelling in university, but without football, that that wouldn't have been an avenue for me. And, and the same with my brother and the same as with um, a lot of other people that I know that have played football, then they were able to use football to leverage a lot of them we're in high school, not even thinking of taking university courses or academic courses, and they were on 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 route to go to college, and and that really they really used football as a springboard to take them to to prestigious universities and really be able to leverage it. But even on a personal level, um, 
one thing my mom always said, uh, I think it's an old Caribbean proverb, but she said that, that the devil makes time for idle hands. Um, that being, that being that, you know, when you're, when you're a young person, um, and you're outside, um, there's a lot of things that you could get into and there's a lot of things that you could do. And there's a lot of different people, young and old that you could find yourself around sometimes maybe doing positive things and sometimes not always the most positive things. And I think one thing that's amazing about football, especially youth football, is that when you're around that team atmosphere, now you're doing something physically active and you're going to be around a lot of positive role models because a lot of these coaches are um, like them giving that much time in their community alone shows how much of a positive impact and a positive role model they are into the community. So you're 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 now having um kids, youth, whatever age, um, now around positive influences, positive role models, doing something positive and getting those reinforcements to say, you know, it's important now you're on the football field and now a coach is telling you or people that you look up to are telling you, you know, it's important to work hard. It's important to, to, to stay in school if you really want to play at the next level. It's important for you to respect um, other people. It's important for you to communicate. So now you're getting all these lessons from football and you're away from any idle time, any idle behaviors um, that a lot of people end up getting caught in, caught, caught up in, um, or especially around those tender ages from, from 14 to 18, when, when people could be doing a lot of different stuff after school. And now you're, you know, you're playing football, you're playing organized sport. Mm. It's interesting. Um, as you share that, I love your analogy, like, you know, idle hands, right. It's just like, we all have the same 24 hours in a day, you know, what you choose, what activities you choose there, you know, is always, you know, in your power. But like mm -hmm. you said, you know, especially during those formative years, especially high school age, you know, mm -hmm. it's understanding, you know, again, coming from background education, very often the most inviting spaces are sometimes the spaces we don't want our young people in the environments. We don't want our young people going in. Well, and, yeah. the, and those are the easy paths to go on. But like you said, sports, football, their vehicles to get you around positive role models to teach and reinforce greater life lessons. And it's just a different vehicle uh, to teach people how to be great human beings outside of the four walls of the classroom. 1000%. Okay. Yep. So I'm curious, brother, I want to be respectful of your time and energy. Um, let's say you had the opportunity to, you know, rewind and let's say you had a younger version of yourself maybe it was you know early in that high school journey right mm -hmm. where you're kind of thinking which path am I going on am I going on the easy path which might not get me to somewhere where I necessarily want to go <laughs> where I where mom wants me to go or you know I'm going to walk this other path I'm going to see out this football thing what words of wisdom would you offer your younger self as they are sort of at that crossroads trying to decide which path to take? What words of, I'm thinking about my younger self in context. What would I ask myself or what would I tell myself? I think one of the biggest things, Ooh, that's a good one. I think one of the biggest things that I would tell myself is it's important to know it's important to know that you're what you're doing right now. I think one of the biggest things that especially me and myself going along the way, and I think many young people um, feel like this, they don't know if they're doing the right thing or not. They, they have no clue. They just, like, or obviously everything that they think are, or they're just, they're just going throughout life. So I think one thing I would tell myself is um, if you're around the right people and it, and if what you're doing, if, if it feels hard, and if if you don't know the outcome, but you're striving for success, and you're striving to do something positive, then good things will come, and, and you're doing the right thing. Because I think when I was that age, um, obviously, uh, one of the hardest things to do in life, anybody that's chasing a goal, is to, the, to chase the unknown. 
you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to end up playing in university. You don't know if you're going to end up playing pro. You don't know if you're going to end up being good, but you're still putting in these hours. Um, so I think one of the biggest things I would tell myself is um, irrespective of whatever the goals are, or even if you have those goals, if you're working towards those goals, you're doing the right thing and you're going to enjoy it and good is going to come out of it because, uh, you know, hard work always works. But yeah. I think it's really just to trust yourself and and to really just enjoy it and to to know you're doing the right thing or you're on the right path, even though you don't know what that finish line or you don't know what that 10 years down the road looks like. And that's probably something I need to take that advice right now because I look 10 years ahead and I still don't know if I'm doing the right thing right now, but I'm sure hopefully 10 years from now, I'll look back and think the same thing that I told myself, you know, today. Yeah. Hey, you know, interesting. I know that, you know, when we're having this, another conversation 10 years from now, I have a feeling that, you know, your willingness to put in the reps and sets to put in the hard work and your willingness to embrace uncertainty. I have a feeling you'll be, much further along on your journey and a lot closer to where you want to go, brother. So I, yeah. I look forward to that conversation 10 years from now. <laughs> That'd be a nice episode two. That'd be a nice. Yeah. So brother, um, most importantly, you know, obviously you have lots going on season just kicked off. You know, you got lots of dreams of how, you know, we've talked about how, you know, we can start to, you know, bless more young people with the beautiful lessons within this game. Um, you know, what can we do to help and support you? You know, where can people go to learn more about, you know, what you're helping to grow? Yeah, would love to for you to share anything you're up to. Yeah, um, I do have some things that I'm up to, but I'm going to keep it um, a little low for now. I guess we'll see, I guess, in the next couple of months and everything, how everything goes. But I guess if you want to find me, it's um, on Instagram. It's uh, Rob S. Smith underscore. I have my, uh, obviously, I'm a strength and conditioning coach in the off season. So mm -hmm. my Instagram for that is Praxis Performance. You can find that on my personal Instagram as well um, for any strength conditioning, sprint training, and and things like that. But I do have some things in the pipeline, and I would, I would, uh, I want to get a couple more stuff ironed out. And then and, um uh, uh i'd love to see it come to fruition so yeah absolutely brother and happy to share both of those uh social media handles in the description either on the podcast or on youtube and uh you've definitely piqued my interest so uh, you know i'm eagerly anticipating what's what's next what uh what the next adventure entails um robbie i just want to take a moment to acknowledge you uh i want to acknowledge you for the great man you are, you know, uh, the great son, the great partner, you know, the amazing mentor you are, but more importantly, the amazing human being you are. The one thing I've really come to appreciate from this conversation is just the simplicity which you go about life, like a willingness to work hard, right? And just, you know, take it step by step, you know, is, is a, it's a simple reminder. It's a powerful reminder. And just really want to thank you for reminding of us um, really how simple this game of life can be. So thank you for that, brother. I appreciate it. And I appreciate being on the podcast and letting me talk for an hour. You know, it's 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 been amazing. And, and getting to hear some of your tidbits of wisdom, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you a lot for this. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, brother. So, folks. Robbie dropped so many valuable nuggets of wisdom that will not only help you succeed in sport, but more importantly, in the game of life. But as I, as I like to remind you every week in the huddle, knowledge is potential power. It's a consistent and focused application of great knowledge that actually helps you create greater results in your life. So my challenge to you is to take one of these valuable nuggets of wisdom and go apply to your life today. And as I like to remind you every week in the huddle, you are deserving of greatness. You are worthy of greatness. You are greatness. And my only ask from these conversations, if it resonated with you, if it touched your heart, then please share it with a friend, a loved one, a teammate, or just someone you think that would benefit from listening to these positive, inspiring, and empowering ideas. The more people we have listening, understanding, and applying these simple principles to their life, the more blessed this world will be. As always, love having these conversations with you in the huddle. Have a blessed rest of your day, everyone.